Okay, so this is nice. I'm trying to set up VMware tools, and I would love to copy the directory from the desktop right into the terminal, but instead the desktop is completely frozen and everything else is responsive. So that makes my life like a thousand times more difficult to have to go through the process of having to go in here and do the same freaking thing because the desktop completely goddamn frozen. <sighs> this is boding well for the uh, actual video, I guess. <laughs> G'day folks, Jordan here with another software overview video. Today we're looking at Ubuntu 1710 Artful Aardvark, released on the 19th of October 2017. Uh, two things, one, obviously the alphabet has reversed around, so now we're back to A, although needless to say it really wasn't in order to begin with from the beginning, but maybe the next 26 releases of Ubuntu should hopefully stay in alphabetical order and they can come up with some brand new terms for the alphabet. I don't know. Second thing, we're starting off today's video at the login screen because as you can see, there is a different look to the login screen. Now, this is a result of the new shell that is built on top of Ubuntu. No longer is Unity inside of Ubuntu at all, although technically Unity 7 is still in this release at this point in time, but the next release completely ditched it in favor of this new shell. Well, as you can see, that new shell also updates the login screen with a new visual style. Now, with that, well, comes a new display server, and there comes a nice little explanation from a canonical software engineer for the Ubuntu desktop releases. So, Ken Van Dyne, who is a canonical software engineer for the Ubuntu desktop team, he was tasked with switching the desktop environment of Ubuntu from Unity to GNOME, or I know it's called Genome or GNOME in some other countries, don't, you know, harp on me on the comment section for pronouncing the desktop environment wrong because in other countries they pronounce it differently. I mean, if it's such a big deal to you that I pronounce it like genome or gnome or whatever, then you need to have some kind of help. Or just download my video. I know there's utilities you can use to download my video and dub over every time I say the word gnome with how you say gnome or genome. I don't know. I feel like that's necessary. But anyway, I'm going to be saying a gnome a lot in this video, so I figured I'd just put a little mini disclaimer in there. But anyway, back to the explanation. So Ken Van Dyne himself had confirmed that there was no intention to ship Unity 8. In fact, that in future releases of Ubuntu, they'd be sticking with the GNOME shell interface with some light modifications to fit the Ubuntu user experience. For example, as you can see, this dock has the Ubuntu style of Unity interface applied to it. Uh, of course, the default GNOME shell, as you might be able to see from a distro like Fedora, actually has like clean stock GNOME interface. But this one's slightly modified to fit the needs of Ubuntu, as one might expect. It's got the, I believe this is the ambience theme still applied. It's got the Ubuntu style buttons on it, but otherwise, it's pretty much nearly stock GNOME shell. And there's very few modifications to it that are differing from the standard shell, which is pretty nice, I suppose, for some people who were wondering about that. Another interesting change was the drop of 32-bit. Now, I don't want to harp on this too much, but basically, if you were to go onto uh, the Ubuntu website and download or attempt to download Ubuntu 17.10, it's only available in 64-bit. Now, this was a pretty big deal, I suppose, and 32-bit being dropped is kind of a thing nowadays. I of course, nowadays, modern Linux mostly comes in 64-bit flavors because there's not a lot of 32-bit support for, well, 32-bit programs on Linux. A lot of programs nowadays are 64-bit are defaults, and you'd be lucky to find a 32-bit program out there anymore. That's also kind of the same thing with Mac OS. Now, I know of a few outliers like BitTorrent and Steam and maybe some others that have been so lackluster in getting 64-bit support out because I'm still getting messages from the latest version of Steam and I'm still getting messages from the latest version of BitTorrent that are still 32-bit. I, I don't know what it's gonna take for Apple to get on them about updating their programs, but I guess I don't know, when the next release comes out and nobody can run their software, I guess then it's about time that they're gonna start at people. I don't know. 
but you know it, it's kind of a thing I'm, I'm kind of getting sick of seeing 32-bit messages it's kind of getting annoying but anyway another interesting thing was 1710 is one of the very few mainstream releases and i mean this because there's no lts badge on this this was one of the few if not the first mainstream release to have a dot one update and that's pretty rare for a Ubuntu mainstream release because usually the 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 release uh, increments are saved for the long-term support versions, not for the mainstream because usually the mainstream is just the one release and then there's updates piled on top of that. But in this case, there was a serious problem with some Lenovo systems not booting their firmware. And thus, that's why the 1710.1 update was released to cure that problem. And again, it's it's super rare for a mainstream release to get a dot one update. This is probably the first on top of my on the top of my head. I can't think of anything else that would have had a dot one update that's not a long term support release. Now with that, that's pretty much all there is that's different and noteworthy about 1710. Now there were a couple of reviews that might be worth reading. One of them was from J. A. Watson of ZDNet. And in his review, he said, and I quote, I have not been much of an Ubuntu fan for a long time now, but this release includes a lot of significant changes, many of which might address some of my most serious objections about Ubuntu. So I think I should take a closer look at it than I normally do. And then uh, he goes on talking about the printer configuration saying, and I quote, I got a notice that our wireless printer had been successfully configured. I hadn't even thought about trying to set up a printer yet, so that was a very nice surprise. And a good thing to point out to those who are still going around spouting five plus years out of date information about how difficult it is to use printers with Linux. So that's a pretty positive outlook on the printer support in 1710. Another review is from Scott Gilbertson of Ars Technica. He said, and I quote, Ubuntu 1710 is a huge departure for Ubuntu, but one sees that the distro is getting its footing back. Well, I said that kind of out of whack, but whatever, anyway. The transition to GNOME, while not without its pitfalls for some users, is surprisingly smooth. Unity did have some features you won't find in GNOME, but Canonical has done a good job of making things familiar, if not identical, hence like the dock and you know some other things about the UI. More important than in individual features in 1710, this release sees Ubuntu starting over to some degree. The long development process of Unity 8 was threatening to turn it into Godot, but now Ubuntu is free of Unity 8. Its users no longer have to wait for anything, which is true, because of course now it's a completely new desktop environment, and it's certainly something that Ubuntu devs don't have to stress out too much about because it's being updated by the standard GNOME you know, people. So. That's a nice thing. They don't have to worry about Unity 8 and all that stuff, so whatever. Now I will say about this desktop environment, it's not exactly my first go-to. I still prefer KDE when it comes to my default desktop environment on a Linux installation. That's just my preference. I do think that this is a pretty solid desktop environment for those who want to get into Linux for the first time. I think it's friendly. I think it's visually pleasing. And I do think that there is some customizability and some flexibility with it that you could definitely make it work to your needs. It's just for me, I like a couple more visual uh, flashy things. And I do find that KDE runs significantly better on older graphics cards and older CPUs in particular, because I do find that when I was running Ubuntu 1804 LTS on my HP XW6600 workstation, I do find... Bleh. I did find that the desktop environment itself was quite limiting in performance and it was causing some things to run very slowly and in particular I think games had a big problem with this because OpenGL support was quite bad and I know this is to be a case with older graphics cards but I find that driver support seems to work significantly better in Kubuntu rather than Ubuntu and it also could be the same thing for Linux Mint but no quoting on that. But I do think that if you do have a fairly modern system or something that's still getting driver updates, that this is a pretty solid desktop environment and one that'll get you by. Especially if you're running like Fedora or something, it does make sense. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the GNOME Shell specific programs or changes inside of this release, starting with the settings app. So if we go into the settings app here, you can see that it is drastically different compared to the last one. All of the major toggles are now on the side and there's no more like center category except for when you click on something. 
And this is one of my harps with the GNOME shell, and that is the fact that there's no direct access to display resolutions, for example. You have to go under devices and then displays, and only then can you change your resolution. And I, I do find that it's probably smarter to do it that way, but I find that since I've been a long time user of Unity for a while now, it was a bit disorienting to jump into this. It It's not hard, it's just I do think that it takes a little bit of getting used to, and I just I didn't like the change necessarily. And I do find that there are a lot of redundant choices, especially in the newer release, like 1804 and 1810, where there's a random Thunderbolt icon where on most PCs there's no Thunderbolt, so why the hell is it there? I don't know. There's some other bizarre things that I don't really like. Like, for example, why is background, why is it that not in with the display settings? Like, why is the display setting out here where you're most likely to, you know, change that sort of stuff? It's all confusing. And another thing is that, well, this wallpaper thing, it's a bit interesting because um, there's no obvious, like, browse button. And that's what's really sad is I don't want to have to always drag stuff to the pictures folder. I just want to set a wallpaper from wherever. But there's no browse button. So what gives, right? Anyway, doesn't really matter too much. Um, but I guess in retrospect, I guess it's for the better. I don't know. I'm impartial to GNOME Shell. I haven't really used it too much, so I can't really be too harsh on it because probably hundreds of thousands of people use this desktop environment. And I say that because Linux market share is absolutely like bad. <laughs> but you know, I, I I do think that there are some people who do like this environment, but I'm personally not one of them. This would not be my first go-to. I still like the KDE Plasma environment. It's much more elegant to me anyway, and it's much more conventional, and it works a lot faster on older hardware especially, which is primarily what I have running on Linux. And I'm sure a lot of people would agree. But again, it's not bad. It's just it's not my first go-to choice. So anyway, I actually had updates applied to this release of Ubuntu, so I'm actually kind of curious to see what version of Firefox and LibreOffice we are actually running. I know it's a version of Quantum of some kind, I don't know which one, it looks like 61.0.1. And interestingly, I don't see an obvious menu bar. But then again, Firefox Quantum had a different menu system, so that's not surprising to say the least. But as you can see, there's Firefox Quantum, this is the latest version for uh, 17.10 is 61.0.1 and I'm actually kind of surprised that I got the updates for that to work which is interesting and then in terms of LibreOffice we'll just run the main executable nothing specific so you have you probably already noticed and this is with VMware tools that the GNOME shell is quite laggy and quite slow that's another one of my complaints is that it's not smooth at all and they haven't fixed this in the latest release of 1810 it's still quite a really laggy and slow experience when navigating through the UI I just press the cancel button like a d <laughs> whoops but anyway so LibreOffice version 5.4.6.2 we're also running on Linux kernel version 4.13 and again, if you want to see what's new with the Linux kernel version 4.13, you can look that up yourself. One thing that I do appreciate over Unity is the fact that the uh, menu, or the menu, the window controls are in one standard place. And they're not hidden up here in the menu bar. They're not over here on the left or whatever. They're in one standard place. On the right, wherever the window is, Thank you, or thank you, GNOME, for making something standardized that many Windows users will appreciate. And at least Macintosh users, they just have to remember that, yeah, it's on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side, but everything's still there and not hidden in the title bar. Thank you. That was my most frustrating bit of Ubuntu from the Unity days. But that's about all I can really say that's positive. I mean, I, I'm glad they changed that, though. So anyway, that's about it for Ubuntu 17.10. There's not really too much that I can demonstrate here on the video because, well... Obviously, you know, this is not a supported release anymore. In fact, there's barely anything here that probably still works on 17.10, but aside from a few applications, probably like Discord and Steam and Telegram and, you know, Slack, Spotify, whatever, all these other programs. I doubt any of them are going to work because, again, this is an unsupported release and this is not really working that well. I don't know what's going on with the Discord button, but it's not working. And it's also very slow. I'm not even going to pick it. So, anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, if you guys liked it, I know it's not too much, but if you did like it, go ahead and click the thumbs up button down below. If you want to see more content like this, 
don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a good one.